Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. One of the strong points of this article, Corporate Governance and Ethics, A Feminist Perspective, is that it focuses on the issue of caring as central to feminist ethics and also something that can come out of other ethics as well, including Kantian and, and Rawlsian approaches. Now, care is a, a term that sounds really good. It's really easy to use. It's easy to talk about, you know, being caring or being empathetic. And so long as we remain at a high level of generality, there don't seem to be too many problems with it, except for people who think that we ought to be uncaring. But the question you might ask is, well, how does this actually play itself out within a business ethics context? When we start getting to not absolute specificity of you know individual cases, but sort of that middle level where the concepts need to, to apply in general ways, then you know, there, there are some, some confusions and perhaps some places where somebody might say, I, I'm not sure exactly how this applies. So one of the good points that's made by the, art, the article and its authors is that there's a lot of discussions at the time that they're writing about who to care for. So there's a lot of discussion, for example, about stakeholders and identifying who the stakeholders are and thinking about which ones are particularly vulnerable. You know, for example, if you're, if you're thinking about a customer base, not all customers are exactly the same and some might require a kind of duty or imperative of care more than others. You know, for example, if you're marketing to both adult segments and children. The children would need uh, to be attended to somewhat differently. You might not orient your advertising in such blatant ways as to arouse their desires if you're fo following a, a, an ethics of care. Now, one of the things that gets left out, unfortunately, is discussions about how to care. So there's a lot of discussion about who to care for, but not a lot of discussion about the modalities of care that would be involved. How to care in such a way that you're actually making the situation better, not just you know throwing this open-ended care in there as if you're throwing a bunch of life preservers out, um, but how to actually empower others in the process. Because the ethics of care is developmental. It's not simply about taking care of others for the rest of their life. And as they're going to point out, there's a really great discussion of this. Um, the, uh, the ethical caring processes cannot simply be uh, you know, ongoing and, and, and entirely lacking reciprocity. So um, they say, the first two dimensions that we're going to talk about caring about and taking care of are the first steps in building an ethics of care, but they resemble to some extent a problem solving approach for an ethical caring process to fully develop. The caring relation cannot be a one way system that might foster dependence on the one cared for. Now, there are going to be some situations, you know, uh, during childhood, the, the uh, parent is going to have to care for children in ways that, you know, most likely the children can't care back, uh, although they can return the care later on when there's, you know, uh, uh, you know, aging process taking place and perhaps senility or something like that. And there may be some people who are permanently cast in the position of having to be cared for without being able to care back or, or able to develop. That's rarely the case within a business ethics context, however.
And so if we're talking about caring in the sense of, for example, a manager who's dealing with a, quote, difficult employee uh, using care rather than, you know, strict justice in doing evaluations and coaching and things like that, it's not meant to keep that person in a dependent relationship their entire time, but rather to empower them to be able to develop their potential and uh, better themselves and perhaps even be able to mentor somebody down the line. What are the, the, the side effects or uh, the bad consequences of permanently uh, dependent relationships of care. For the caregiver, one of the big problems is burnout and emotional withdrawal. So it's very important that there be what, what they call relational reciprocity leading to empowerment and emancipation. That won't always happen, but that is the ideal that's governing it. And so we can distinguish uh, four different dimensions of care that all need to be part of the process if the ethics of care is going to be applied well within a business context. And they put this into a useful table. So the first uh, part of it is caring about. And uh, the focus there is on the recognition that there is a need to care. You may identify, again, an employee as somebody who needs to be cared for in ways that are different than the other employees. You notice that they, for example, may have more anxiety in being given new assignments. And so you, you know, spend a little bit of extra time uh, walking them through that. You identify them as somebody who, who's going to need care. And what are the key values here? Attentiveness is one of them. Being able to actually take in uh, who is going to be more vulnerable, who needs more help. Focus, susceptibility, being able to actually take in somebody else's views. Then we have the next level, and this is where it becomes active, taking care of. So this is... Uh, going to involve a focus on willingness and capacity to do something about a situation where care is needed. Not everybody who recognizes that somebody needs care will actually respond in such a way as to say, well, I guess they're not getting it. I had better be ready to provide it, even if that sets us behind a, a little bit on a, a deadline or a task or, you know, maybe uh, might affect the bottom line in very marginal ways. So this willingness, that's a disposition and capacity. That's another important aspect. Not everybody has the capacity to e either care in the sense of being empathetic uh, or to do something. So, you know, I might, I might register that somebody needs, uh, help, but I might not have the time to do it because of all the other, uh, things that I'm doing, which might include caring for other people. So the key value here is responsibility. So first we have attentiveness and then responsibility. We get to the real action part of it, the full action, when we get to care giving. This is the, the third dimension of care, carrying out, carrying, carrying out caring activities or ensuring that caring needs are met. Now notice, why do they have to put both of those things in there? Because you can't do everything yourself. Uh, imagine something outside of a business situation. You have an aged parent and you need to, to go to work. Um, what do you do? to ensure that that aged parent's needs are met. Well, you might bring in a home nurse or you might uh, call a neighbor to check in on them or there might be all sorts of other things that you do as well. It doesn't all have to be you as the individual providing the care. It could be relying on a network to help support that intention of caring. So what are the key values involved here? Uh, there's two really important ones, and, and I, I, I particularly like this. So one of them is empathy, right? Being able to empathize with the other person, which does not mean feeling everything that they feel, but actually being able to register what it is that they're feeling and responding appropriately. The second one, however, is competence. It doesn't do any good to provide care, except on a very basic level, 
if you're not competent in some way to provide that care. So, you know, armchair psychologists uh, engaging in, in all sorts of analysis of their uh, co-workers problem on the basis of pop psychology books or, uh, you know, relying on Dr. Phil's dictums or something like that. Probably not a good idea when it comes to care. If somebody really has a serious psychological problem, you refer them to a counselor, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a therapist, somebody who's actually competent to handle that, right? Um, finally, care receiving. It's not enough if, if you want to have a full ethics of care just to be always giving to other people, because if you do that, you will inevitably burn out sooner or later. Um, care receiving is another important part of this. And the focus here is on the interaction between the giver and receiver of care. So it's not just that you help other people and then other people help you. There should eventually be some sort of response on the part of the person helped. And, and some may be incapable of that, and some may be uh, temporarily unable to do that or unwilling to do that or they don't trust enough. But sooner or later, there has to be some sort of reciprocity being established. Doesn't mean that it has to be exactly the same thing coming back and forth, but there has to be something. And what does that involve uh, as, as a value? Responsiveness and receptiveness. There's a lot of people who are very good at supporting others, very good at being empathetic with others. And then when others uh, act that way towards them, they kind of freeze up. They're not really sure how to handle that. It's important to be able to receive care, not, not, not only so that you can provide it, but also because you matter as well. You are also a, a human being within this matrix of relationships. So this is a really great discussion in this article about what the, the, these four dimensions of care would be and how all of them are required in order to realize the ideal of an ethics of care, particularly within business ethics situations.